All right, guys, let's get started. Today, we're going to be talking about kidney stones. And the goal for today is to start getting you thinking about those level two concepts, you know, go beyond just rote memorization and start thinking about what are some really tricky ways that can tr test kidney stones. And so just a summary, if you had to guess what type of kidney stone you have, it's going to be calcium. Um, if they mention staghorn calculus, you're thinking about struvite stones. And if they mention that you have acidic urine, and let's say um, you don't actually see the stone on x-ray, then you could be thinking about a uric acid stone. So coming back to those you know, elementary concepts, everyone knows how kidney stones present. You have sharp unilateral flank pain. You might have some CVA tenderness. Um, the big idea is that if you have a small stone, you can just do pain control. Once you start getting into the bigger stones, you're then thinking about shockwave therapy. Um, if you have to pick a number, probably more than five millimeters, you can't pass on your own. Know the shapes here. If you, um, if you just want to memorize two, Memorize the envelope here. If you kind of think about it, when you get an envelope in the mail, that's what it looks like. Um, when you have a coffin, it kind of has this kind of shape. So that's what you see here. Um, I think for level two, this is honestly low yield, but you know, you might see one question. Um, one thing step two likes to ask is epidemiology. So you can kind of look at america as a whole if when you're in the sec region here that's where you get stone so this is the stone belt um men get more stones than women and the older you are the more of a risk you have but within kids themselves female teens have the highest kidney stone rates um these are some of the buzzwords associated with kidney stones so i talked about a few of them you really want to know, okay, let's say my urine pH is off the rails high. What are you thinking about here? Let's say you have an acidic urine. This is going to be uric acid. Um, this one I thought was really interesting. And so do you remember which diseases cause extra renal vitamin D production? Because what that does is it raises calcium. And so you get calcium stones. And again, these are just, as you're studying, commit these to memory. Um, one level two concept is trying to predict to a patient, you know, let's say they have a stone. They want to know, obviously, are they going to pass it on their own? And so if you look here, this is stone width, and you kind of get this sigmoidal curve. So I, in, in my opinion, if you have an 80% chance of passing a stone, I'll, you know, I'll tell you, you can pass it. And so kind of right around five, you're like not, you're basically not going to pass it on your own anymore. When you think about urease positive organisms, the whole idea here is they have an enzyme that lets them break up urea into little parts and they use those parts, um, to better survive. And so what this does is it raises the urine pH. And so the one you really need to know about is Proteus and it's going to cause these staghorn calculus. When you pull them out, they kind of look like the horns on a deer, um, or a little, you know, ginger root. So now we get into some step two concepts. Um, we have a 28 year old female. She presents with left sided abdominal pain began three hours ago. She describes this pain as being non remitting 10 out of 10 in intensity <clears throat> and worse than childbirth. She has been tanning out in the sun and recently started a new over the counter medication for weight loss. And she shows us a picture of it. So what is the next best step in management? And so we'll talk about why this happens but i kind of want you to think about it obviously this is a kidney stone video and so um as far as diagnosing a kidney stone we do a non-con ct and so 
really the question here is why is someone on orly stat getting kidney stones and the reason why if you look over here let me get my pen um, if you look over here so orlistat is a lipase inhibitor and what it does is it causes fat to just pass right through and so when you have fat just passing through what happens is that you reabsorb more oxalates and so whenever you reabsorb more oxalates um, this is going to cause the formation of calcium oxalate stones and um, a different way we can test that is, you know, Crohn's disease. You basically, you have fat malabsorption just like you do when you're on Orlistat. And so what this is doing is it binds up the calcium. You have less calcium and therefore more oxalate. Kind of look at that here. And where does oxalate go? It goes to the kidneys. And when you excrete it, it forms little stones. And then you get pain. So that is the whole pathophys. And so, you know, we'll write Crohn's here. Um, I really think, you know, this is important in real life too. And so uh, this is, this is kind of high yield. Again, just summarizing, you basically just have, you know, you have too many oxalates. That's why you get these stones. So looking at a different question now, why does sarcoidosis cause kidney stones? And the reason why is these little alveolar macrophages. And so what macrophages do is they take um, the precursor to vitamin D that the liver makes, and normally that's converted in the kidney to just active vitamin D. But the macrophage can do it too. So now basically what you have going on is you have lungs making vitamin D. And so we... Um, we can kind of take that one step further. When you have more vitamin D, you have more calcium. And when you start trying to pee that calcium out, get little stones. And what do they look like? They look like little dumbbells. They look like little mail envelopes. Just integrating it here, um, sarcoidosis, it shows these non-caseating granulomas. And so in the middle of the granuloma, you have cells and, um, the whole idea is in sarcoidosis, we, uh, we have macrophages that are out of control and they form these granulomas. So how do we treat a kidney stone? The most important thing is pain control. People with kidney stones, they typically have 10 out of 10 pain. Um, you really, uh, you'll know you're having a kidney stone. Um, anything less than five millimeters, it's acceptable to just do IV hydration and prayers, pain control. Um, you do have medications that stretch the ureter out. And so, uh, you'll hear this called Flomax. And, um, what it does is it stretches the ureter out. Um, once you start talking about stones over 10 millimeters, you're going to go in there with a little catheter that has a laser on it and you kind of just like um, break up the stone. Anything more than two centimeters, though, you have open surgery. And this is when you're placing an actual stent. So they really, you know, they won't ask you about that. Basically, what you need to know is um, if they can pass it or not. And so when we look at, you know, all the receptors that work on the bladder, um, the one we really care about is this alpha-1 receptor here. And so this is the bladder neck. And um, if we kind of take it back to anatomy, we have sympathetic tone, right? The hypogastric nerve. What this does is it constricts the bladder neck. And so... Um, when we block the alpha-1 receptor, we then stretch the ureter out. And so really the main medication we use is Tamsulosin, also called Flomax. And what it does is it widens out this ureter. Um, just integrating into other diseases, you'll notice right at the bladder neck is where the prostate is in men. And so um, 
the same medication we give to help pass a stone is the same medication you give when you have blood or when you have prostate enlargement compressing the bladder um and so the idea is that once you stretch this out, the stone just passes through. This is a higher level two concept. Um, what if you have someone who not only has kidney stones, but they also, you know, they're always having pain in their knee. They've taken an x-ray and, you know, it's just negative. There's no explanation for their knee pain. Um, they've been feeling more depressed lately. They've had some personality changes. And again, I'll remind you, you have to take a really good history to elicit these diagnoses. And so um, on an exam question, they'll give you all this, but in real life, you really have to be asking about all these things. And so um, abdominal pain, depression, joint pain, kidney stones, what connects all these things? The answer is hypercalcemia. And the reason why is hyperparathyroidism. And so if you'll remember, um, when you have, you can kind of look at the arrows here, but essentially what you're trying to figure out here is, do I have a vitamin D deficiency? Or do I have a neck mass? Um, Another question, we have someone being treated for nephrotic syndrome. They're due to have a kidney biopsy soon. One day before their surgery, they develop sharp right-sided abdominal pain and flank pain. And so when I first saw this question, I started thinking of a kidney stone. And, you know, they kind of have some of the same symptoms. They have really sharp pain on one side. They have red urine. I mean, this is basically kidney stone, right? But... um the key here is nephrotic syndrome. And so is this a stone? I'll let you kind of think about it. Um, and then what should you do next? And um, so the next step here is just a CT scan. And if you kind of look at here, we have a hypo intense lesion um, on CT. And so what that means is we have no blood flow here. And the reason why is a clot. And so this is not a stone. There's no stone here. If there was a stone, we would kind of see it. But this is just a blood clot. And the reason why is because when you have nephrotic syndrome, you're losing antithrombin. And so essentially you're inhibiting, you're inhibiting factor 10, um, kind of very similar to the way that anticoagulation works. And so in nephrotic syndrome, you pee this stuff out. And when you do that, um, you start clotting and that causes renal vein thrombosis. So this is, a, this is a really high yield question. I've seen this multiple times in my banks. All right, last question. Um, a 45 year old male recently started oral therapy for vesicular lesions around the mouth. And so I don't even have to tell you what that is, but we kind of mix it up here. They started oral therapy and now he notices that his urine has tinges of red in it. He's feeling a little bit of mild pain on the left side. Lab testing reveals increased BUN and creatinine and some RBCs in the urine. And so, um, is this caused by increased calcium, increased oxalate, medication effect, excess homocysteine in the urine, or increased serum uric acid? Um, I'll let you think about this, and I'll pause and go on. And so the answer here is medication effect, and I think this is, um, this is a really good question. So there's something called a crystal-induced nephropathy. And really the one you'll be tested on is acyclovir, but I want to point some other ones out to you. Methotrexate, protease inhibitors, like when you have um, HIV or hep C, and also just uric acid. And so these can all form crystals in the tubules. And what happens is the kidney cells slowly start to die. So you have um, hematuria, you might have some white blood cells. Most importantly, you have crystals in the urine.
And so the treatment here is to uh, adequately rehydrate and then give a loop diuretic. So that was it for this video. Let me double back and just kind of remind you of the most important points. Um, a calcium stone is the most common stone. When you have acidic urine, that causes uric acid stones. When you have alkaline urine, that causes struvite stones. Crohn's disease causes too much oxalate to be absorbed, and that causes calcium oxalate stones. Staghorn calculus is associated mostly with proteus. When you, whenever you have fat malabsorption, and this could be, you know, pancreatitis, pancreatic insufficiency, taking medications, um, you had a bowel resuction, whatever, uh, that's going to cause kidney stones. And then um, remember some of the receptors that act on the bladder, most importantly, the alpha-1 receptor. And remember renal vein thrombosis. Thank you, guys.